Well, hello, my kindred spirits. How are y'all doing today? I hope that every one of y'all are doing great. I wanted to come on and do just sort of a chit-chat video with you today because my schedule is sort of all over the place with my clients coming in and so I didn't want to leave you hanging because I put out so many videos last week and then this week I'm afraid this is going to be the only one but I appreciate y'all so much and I care about you and so I wanted to make sure that I came on and said hello to you and and um, and as always, I always hope that you are comforted by these videos or you learn something. You know, I struggle because sometimes I want to make a big production and I may just not have time for that. And I know that if you want to grow on YouTube, you are supposed to sort of follow a formula with your videos and your scheduling. And I don't quite do that, but please know that I even though I'm maybe not a traditional YouTuber in that sense, I do care very much about y'all. And this, this YouTube journey has been just surprising and unexpected as far as the friendships who have I've formed on here. And it just, it, you all mean so much to me because Sometimes you will share stories with me about your life and good stories and bad stories and sad stories too. And that's not something that I take lightly by any means. If, if you care enough and are, are trusting enough to share something like that with me, I, I take that to heart and I respect that and I just appreciate I appreciate you too and you know it's, it's kind of a give and take because I share things with y'all on here too and it's just it's been so much fun it's been a lot of fun so I sincerely appreciate you all and I appreciate your kind of comments that you leave and and giving the channel a thumbs up and giving the channel a chance too that means so much but what is it like right now in your neck of the woods where you live it is it's um, about noon on Tuesday and it's gorgeous outside I'm looking out the window right now it's absolutely gorgeous it's very muggy out there and which is you know that's the way it is in the South in the summer, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I went to get some oil yesterday from my car. She's fixing to hit the 200,000 mark, y'all. I thought she was a goner. She It, it didn't start this past weekend, and I thought, oh no, she's a goner because she's got so many miles on her, but it, it's fine. We got it started. But anyway, I went to go get some oil yesterday for the car, and the guy who was helping me was talking about how hot it was out outside. And I said, yes, sir, it is. I said, but I'm not going to complain because every winter when it's freezing cold, I always yearn for summer. And I always tell myself when summer hits and it's just awful outside, I'm not going to complain because I'd much rather it be hot than cold any day. But I wanted to share something with y'all that I thought that you might enjoy hearing. I wrote this down goodness, it's probably been a few years ago. I just was thinking about something. And so I wrote it down because, um, I, I've, uh, over the years, I've, I've learned a lot of things in the, about the kitchen and about home life, but this is mostly about the kitchen. But I, I've thought, I've toyed with the idea of writing a book, a cookbook. And so I was thinking about some things that I wanted to share with people that I've learned over the years in the kitchen. So I have wrote down a few things and I thought that you would enjoy hearing them. And maybe you've done some of these things too, but if you haven't, maybe I'll help you for prevent doing those. But anyway, so this, this little piece of paper says a few things that I've learned in the kitchen over the years. And the first one is don't cook Granny Smith apples in an iron skillet. It turns them a funny color. And I'm hard-headed, and so you'd think I'd, I would have learned this by now, but I I had gone to make a, a pie a few years ago. I, I'd gone to make some fried apples a few years ago, not a pie, and I sliced up my Granny Smith apples, and I used my iron skillet that my grandmother gave me when I got married, and I noticed quickly that my, my apples were starting to turn a funny gray color. They weren't a pretty 
kind of a, a bronze colored look that you get from fried apples and I was trying to figure that out and then I went on and I ate them they tasted fine but they were just gray and then a year later I did it again still had those gray apples and finally about the third time I did it I discovered it was the iron skillet that was causing the reaction to the apples so don't cook your Granny Smith apples in an iron skillet. It will turn them a funny gray color. Use a different kind of skillet. The next one I wrote down is don't store your butter and flour in the crisper drawer next to the onions. Now, this was a lesson I learned when I was first married. We had a, a problem with little ants getting into the house and getting into the flour in my dry goods. And so to save them, I was... I was thinking, well, I'll just shove everything in the refrigerator. And so in my crisper drawer, you know, your crisper drawer is for vegetables. And I didn't know. I was silly. And I just stuck my onions in the crisper drawer, which was fine. But then I also stuck my butter and my flour in that crisper drawer with the onions. So, you know, a week later, I, I got the flour and the apple, or flour and the butter out to make cookies and I made the cookies, but the cookies had an odd onion flavor. And it was because they'd been permeated with the onions while they were in that drawer. So the next tip, tip number two, is don't store anything like that in a crisper drawer that shouldn't be with onions because they will take on the flavor of onions. Unless you like onion flavor cookies. So the next tip I have is mayonnaise is not a good substitute for eggs. Now, I know that a lot of times in, in recipes, it'll, it'll give you substitutions and it'll say, you know, if you're out of eggs and you need to make brownies or cookies, you can use mayonnaise as a substitute. Well, I'm here to tell you, maybe somebody has done it well, but I haven't. Every time I've done it, my baked goods taste like garbage with that mayonnaise substitute, so don't do it. Just don't make the recipe if, if you don't have eggs because mayonnaise is not a good substitute. The next tip I have is slice open your avocados as soon as you get them home and eat them. Otherwise, you'll be guessing if they're right for a week and by then it's too late. So how many times have I brought home avocados and let them sit and kind of tried to squeeze and guess if they were ripe and then put it off, put it off, put it off. And then you finally slice into them and they're done for. And you have to dig out the good green parts. Just slice them up when you get home. A, a raw avocado is better than a rotten one any day. So the next tip I have is if you walk into your kitchen and smell a horrendous smell, chances are the potatoes have gone bad. Now that was one that a, a lesson that I learned. I for two days, years ago, I kept smelling this terrible smell in my kitchen, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out what it was. I pulled out the refrigerator, and you know, I, I keep a pretty clean house, and so I kept thinking, something has died in here. What is that smell? And so I'd look through my drains, you know, poured uh, vinegar and, and uh, baking soda down my drains, thinking that could have been it. Finally, I walked into my butler's pantry. I was getting warmer. I was getting warmer as far as that smell goes. And sure enough, it was coming from there. And I looked in the corner and there was a sack of Irish potatoes. And sure enough, one of them had gone bad in the bottom of the bag. And I didn't think of them because they were fairly new. Anyway, a rotten potato smells awful. So <laughs> look for your potatoes if you have a mystery smell and you can't figure out what it is. The, the potatoes might be the culprit. So the next one I have is one that I actually learned from my mother-in-law years ago. And it says, spices are not precious heirlooms. It is okay to throw them out. So years ago, I think it was before Chris and I were even married, we were at his house cooking and I was looking for a spice and I pulled one out of the back of the cabinet and it looked like, and this was in the 90s, but this spice looked like it was from the 70s. And so I asked my mother-in-law about it. I said, do you think this is any good to use? It doesn't smell like anything and it's it's uh, kind of gray, you know. And she said, oh Lord, no, throw that out. I think that is from the 70s. So, And I've met a lot of people who, who you know, you pay a lot for spices and you don't want to throw things out that you think are good but 
you know, after six months to a year, especially if it's a ground spice. Now, some things like a nutmeg, that'll last indefinitely, but a ground spice, throw it out. It's not a precious heirloom, throw it out. It's, you'll be much better off buying fresh. Okay, so the next one I have is one that I learned firsthand, and it says don't put freshly made chicken stew that's still hot directly in the refrigerator. It will sour. So I was making chicken stew, and we got a call from, I think, my daddy, and we needed to get over to my parents' house right away, and it was about a 45-minute drive. And so I probably should have just taken the stew off the eye and set it on the back of the stove and just let it cool down naturally and then when I got home put it in the refrigerator but I put a lid on it and then stuck it in the refrigerator and I didn't think about it until the next day when I went to go eat the stew and I took the lid off and another bad smell came and it had I don't know what had happened over the course of the 24-hour period that it had been in there, but something had gone wrong, and we had to throw it out. So at the time, I worked for a catering company, and I talked to the chef who worked there, and she told me that if you put things in the refrigerator and they're not allowed to cool down first before you stick them in the refrigerator, especially with a lid on it and it's hot, it will cause things to sour, and that's what had happened. And so I learned the lesson the hard way. You need to let things cool off first before putting them in the refrigerator. And so, the okay, here's a biggie right here. The next tip I have is it's okay to use Libby's canned pumpkin for your pumpkin pies. Making a pumpkin pie from a real pumpkin is overrated. So many times I've tried to be the pioneer kind of woman, you know, make that pumpkin pie from scratch all the way and make a scratch made crust and make your pumpkin pie from a real pumpkin that you've grown in the yard yourself, you know. And every time I've done that, my pumpkin pies have tasted like crap. So don't do that unless you've got a really great recipe and you know for certain that it's going to work. Just use the Libby's canned pumpkin. I Yeah, I've done that twice, and both times it was for Thanksgiving, too, so it was too late to go buy the canned pumpkin. So we just had, one time we had a really runny pumpkin pie, and the next time I tossed it, I just said, forget it, we're not doing that. So canned pumpkin is perfectly fine. All right, the next one, this one is a, a very important one. Don't use those funny little bottles of cooking wine in your food ever. So my grandfather was, he loved to cook, but my grandmother was a teetotaler. Now he drank beer, but he would have to go to the beer joint to drink beer. He didn't drink it at home. And so there was no alcohol in the home. So he would buy bottles of cooking wine. So one time I was over there with a friend and my friend said, I dare you to drink that wine. And so I poured myself a glass and I chugged it back. It was horrible. Oh, cooking wine is horrible. So then we went on from that. And then when I got older, I found a recipe for chicken Diane and I made chicken Diane with cooking wine from the grocery store. It was awful. It tasted way too salty. It didn't have a good flavor like the chicken Diane that I had eaten in a restaurant. And I kept trying to figure out what in the world I had done wrong. Well, it wasn't until I watched an episode of Julia Child in which she said, don't ever use wine in a food that you can't drink because it's a terrible flavor. And sure enough, she was right. So the next time I made Chicken Diane, I got a bottle of Chardonnay and used that. Makes all the difference in the world. So never use that cooking wine from the grocery store in your recipes that call for wine. Use wine that you're going to drink that's good enough to drink. So let's see. Here's another one. Okay. So here's here is one that I, I did more times than I'd like to admit. But if you're a new bride and you want to impress your husband with your cooking skills, don't throw out the dish because it's not quite perfect before he gets home. Chances are it still tastes good and he'll be happy that you thought of him. He probably won't even notice notice that it looks funny. And I have to say, I've I have done that so many times. I did that early on when we were married. I um it's funny how you come into marriage 
with your own ideas of what makes a good wife or husband. And so when I got married, we didn't, we were so naive. I can't believe we're getting ready to celebrate 29 years. We were so clueless. We didn't have premarital counseling. We didn't, we didn't look, I mean, we did read women are from Mars, men are from, women are from Venus, men are from Mars. Uh, years ago, but that's about the only thing we read. So we were winging it every time. So again, I can't believe we're still happily married. But anyway, I came into marriage thinking that a good wife keeps a very clean home and she has supper on the table every night because that's what my mother did. And and my mother worked and I did, well, I did too early on, but I always had jobs that would allow me to get home before Chris so that I could have that supper on the table because I thought, well, that's what just what a good wife did. And maybe it is, I don't know. It's, it's kept us married this long, so maybe it was a good thing. But all that to say, I was prof a professionist, perfectionist, and if something didn't look quite right, I tossed it. I'm, a, I'm ashamed to say that, that I tossed it out. And, and Chris would get so upset with me and say, what are you doing? You wasted perfectly good food. And um, so don't do that. Just eat it. And, and it'll be okay. Just eat it. It may not taste the best, but you learn lessons from that. And so don't throw it out just because it's not perfect, because it, it will be okay. <laughs> and then the last thing that I wrote on this that, uh, that I wanted to, to tell you about, a few things that I've learned in the kitchen over the years. This isn't actually a kitchen tip. It's just a tip if you have children, small children. But um, it, it says, I wrote, if you're a stay-at-home mama, do this, and I promise you it will make your hardworking man feel so loved and appreciated. And it just says, every day when he's about to arrive home, get your little ones ready and tell them as soon as he walks in the door, you coach them and say, okay, kids, as soon as daddy walks in the door, y'all cheer and jump up and down and say, daddy's home, daddy's home. And it, it, I went on to write that we did this when my babies were young. And it was so sweet because it made Chris, my husband, feel so honored and loved and appreciated. And it will make him forget about those gray, funny colored apples that were cooked in an iron skillet. And he won't, he won't care that your butter and your flour taste like onions, but <laughs> it does make a difference. It really does because he's, he was at work all day, you know, doing things that were hard and not to say that what I was doing wasn't hard either. Lord have mercy. Being a stay at home mother is, well, you, you lose your sanity. You can lose your sanity if you're at home with three little children all day, if, unless you take sanity breaks. But anyway, that's for another video. But you can do things for each other. It's a give and take to show appreciation. And that was a small token of appreciation, but he always said that that was one of his favorite things from when our kids were little is when they, they jumped up and down and said, Daddy's home, Daddy's home. So anyway, thank you all again so much for watching. I hope that this video taught you a little something. If not, I hope it brought comfort to you in some small way. But again, please know that I... I dearly appreciate each and every one of you, and I just hope that you have a great rest of your day, and I appreciate y'all coming by and giving this channel a chance. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind, if you liked it, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye, my friends.